Now we're going to look at creating our own custom curb return using a polyline that's already been pre-created for you in the drawing. You can see it just here. Before we go ahead and start the process of creating an alignment first, then creating the curb return, we just need to review the geometry of the polyline. At the start, which in this case will be down here on the main road, this is where chainage zero will be, you'll see that the polyline follows the edge of bitumen just for a short section. Really, we'd say a minimum of, say, one meter. At the other end, you can see we've also done the same. We've actually created the polyline a lot further along the edge of bitumen, and this is really entirely up to you. There's a reason for this, and it's due to the way that the software will have to calculate the instantaneous grades that we saw earlier going in and out of the curb return. If we start our curb return immediately with a radius and begin to move away from the edge of bitumen, that we're not giving the software a chance to calculate the instantaneous grade coming in. So by having a small section of polyline in and a small section of polyline going out, um, it gives the software a chance to correctly calculate those instantaneous grades. Now, if you're using Civil 3D, at this point, you'll need to go ahead and create a Civil 3D alignment using this particular polyline, making sure that chain is zero is found down the bottom at this location here. For Civil Site Design users using AutoCAD and BritsCAD, we're actually going to go ahead and create this alignment now. So we're going to go to the Alignments tab, click on Create Alignment, and then select the polyline. Now immediately, the software has applied things like some annotation. The important thing to note is the direction, and that is currently incorrect. It always has to follow the direction of traffic. What we'll need to do is click on the Reverse Direction button. This immediately means that Change Zero is now starting on the main road. Now, if you've gone ahead and created the alignment at this point, and I've already got the direction uh, incorrect, you can always click on edit alignment from the ribbon and then click on the reverse button to swap it over. We're going to type in the following name. We can leave string type, we can also leave description and the start chainage. What I'd recommend though is you uncheck delete existing object. If you do want that polyline for any other design purpose or drafting purpose, you've still got it in the drawing. We're going to check Apply Dynamic Drawing Labels and we're going to pick some very large spacings, 10 meters for the uh, spacings and we're going to go major only. So really we're very, seeing very limited amount of annotation. We're going to click on Refresh and you can see we're really seeing not much, which is probably what we want. So we're not seeing lots and lots of annotation in the drawing. Once we've done that, we're going to click OK. So we have our alignment that's been created. If we wanted to make any changes, as we said earlier, we can click on Edit Alignment. We can delete it if we wish. We can also go to the Roads tab, and if we want to rename it, we can click on the Rename and rename it at this point, or even once we've created the curb return. If we want to use it for the purpose of the curb return, then this is the point where we now go to Network Strings, click on Create Edit Curb Return String, then left-click somewhere on the south side of the intersection. As we do this, we're provided with the default content. Now at this point, we're simply going to change the name to KR2. We're going to leave the template and the batters as they currently are. Under Alignment Geometry, we're going to now go and choose our alignment. So we're going to check Use Alignment. And from the pull down, click on Curb Turn Custom. Once we've done that, all we need to do is click on Create Update. And the software has now moved the edge of bitumen onto the position of our alignment, then automatically connected up all of the codes. And just to show you how Auto works, on Road 1, and I'm going to use the Zoom button here, just to zoom. Road 1, we told the software to remove the footpath code on the left side. And to show you how this operates, when we use Auto, because we've told it to connect the corresponding codes, there is no corresponding code for the left footpath out of there, so it stops it short. So this may be an example of where you'd apply your own template that does include the particular code that you want. So I'm just going to press Escape. When we close the curve return form, we're going to check the box which is Show VGE on Close, and then Close. 
This will now give us the vertical design, the automatic vertical design of our custom curb return. So you can see how the software has generated, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here just so we can see. The software has generated reverse curves, and we can obviously go in and begin to make changes to this, noting the auto design. For the time being, close the vertical grading editor. Let's now have a look at how the intersection looks in Model Viewer.